Hi everyone, my name's Daryl. And I'm Nicole. And so today, we're gonna basically hitch up our A-line. We're not gonna hitch up. I'm going to hitch <laughs> up while Daryl shows me how to do this. So. Or tells me how to do it. He's not gonna show you. I'm going to show you what you can do when you get instructions just blindly from someone on no, how to hitch up. Not blind. Well, I haven't done this before, so. That's true. It is kind of blind for me. <laughs> So when I first got our A-Liner camper, I actually had to pick it up by myself. And even though I watched videos on hitching up, I didn't have a dealer that was showing me how to do it and hitched it up for me for the first time. And then I drove it home. I mean, I had to kind of hitch it up myself and it was, yeah, it was a little stressful. Um, I was worried that I didn't quite have it hitched up correctly. Um, even though the person I bought it from said, oh, you're good, you're fine. Yeah, I was a little worried. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just one of these things that the first couple of times you do it, you're probably going to be a little bit worried. And also the first couple of times you tow, you're going to get a little worried. And certainly the first couple of times that you try to back up into a campsite or try to back up into your garage, you're also going to be a little stressed out. But today what I want to try to do is give you, I'm going to give Nicole some relatively simple instructions, kind of simple instructions, um, for hitching up the trailer. And she's always wanted to be able to hitch up the trailer herself. And so today, hopefully, um, she's gonna be successful in doing that. And hopefully the directions that I'm gonna provide her um, and also provide you if you're brand new um, to getting an A-liner or getting any sort of pop-up camper, hopefully they'll help you as well. Sounds good. Okay, let's so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we want to install the hitch ball. Which we're going off of the list that Daryl has provided you somewhere in the description. And the first item says install hitch ball and lubricate. So, okay, here we go. Here we go. Now, Nicole does have some experience in putting a hitch on. Um, we've done this a couple of times before when we were just camping. You can see the hole here and you can see the hole right there. And it's very important to line those up. I know this because we've put on a basket when we've um, not really towed anything, but we had a basket on here. So normally this would have come with a pin that would go through right there. Um, should be pretty self-explanatory if you get it with a pin. We have a different, we have a locking one just so that no one can steal our hitch when we're at the campsite. So you just feed either the pin or this locking one through and then attach. and it's nice and secure. So right. the other part of that was to lubricate. So um, we have our lubricant right here and it doesn't say on the list, so Daryl's gonna change this list, but I'm assuming I'm supposed to lubricate the ball. Yep. Is that right? So make sure you change the list because I don't think that's like um, self-explanatory. Okay, so the next thing on my list is raising the tongue jack. So one of the things I will say is when you're raising the tongue jack, just something that might be a little bit helpful. Um, so if you're raising it, R for right is raising. So you kind of um, turn it to your right. And for lowering the jack, um, you can turn it to the left. Okay, good to know. And I'm going to assume that this is the jack to That's raise correct. the tongue. That's right. Okay, and so Daryl just told me to turn right. So I need to turn right. And it doesn't say how high to raise it, but it's really to go, it needs to be higher than the ball. Yeah, I would recommend um, that you just raise it up as high as it will go. That way you're not taking any chances just in case. So just raise it up all the way. So I think I'm high enough. Okay. The next item on the list says open coupler. Now as a total newbie, I have no idea what this means. So okay. Daryl? So your, your coupler is basically, um, this is your coupler. Um, so this is what couples and connects basically the trailer to your tow vehicle or to the ball of the tow vehicle. And so this is called the coupler. Um, so typically um, this closes the coupler. So it locks it down and this opens the coupler. So typically 
um, when you unhitch your vehicle, you open the coupler and it'll probably stay open until the next time that you hitch up. Um, but you need to have the, op the coupler open in order for you to connect it to your vehicle. All right, so it's open. Step complete. <laughs> <laughs> Um, next, it says to back up vehicle and line up ball to coupler. All right, so here we go. I'm going to, oh, one other thing to uh, note, you might want to wear some gloves while you're doing this, um, especially if you don't want to, my, my nails aren't great, but if you have nails and you don't want to mess them up or you don't want to get like your entire clothing dirty from this, because apparently this is kind of a messy job. Okay, so Daryl wanted to stop and show you guys something before I actually uh, back up. So when you're lining up the ball on the tow vehicle, you really want the ball to rest right around here, kind of in the front, because it will just slide in. Um, if you have it right over the top and then you drop it in, it might not actually get to the point where you can actually close the coupler. So let me show you this. So I actually kind of like when I'm coupling, I actually kind of sometimes like to get just underneath just to make sure this is what closes over the top of the ball. So if I put the ball in here and then I close the coupler, you will see how it, the ball actually sits on top of this, okay? People will say that you can't lock it without the ball in place, but you can. So let's say the ball isn't quite in there all the way, and then you close it. Well, it looks like maybe you're kind of hooked up, but you're really not because it's closed, but the ball isn't seated all the way in there. So you really want the ball resting right about here. It'll close as you're lowering the jack, it will seat in there and then you close it and now it ain't going anywhere. Alrighty, um, here we go. Um, I've got the rag because you know, with a dirty hand, I don't want to get the steering wheel all dirty. Um, I'm so what's the next item? We're backing up and attaching to the coupler. Alrighty. So I'm assuming most everybody has backup cameras. So we're gonna use that when we're lining it up. So one of the things that you wanna think about doing, especially if you don't have a partner as you're doing this, is just get out and look. So you can see on our backup rear view mirror, you can see that we're not quite there. Go ahead and back up. Okay, stop. You went too far, probably. Uh, yep, I've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull forward just a smidge and hopefully that works. Okay, so we're trying again. Okay. okay park. All right, so Nicole did a really good job of positioning it. And it's basically pretty much almost exactly where we want it. And so now we're just going to lower um, the coupler using the jack onto the ball. So one of the things that I will say is if you are in a garage, you don't, you don't have to get this absolutely perfect um, because your garage is probably relatively level. So the A-liner isn't going to roll. So you could unchalk and then you could move basically it around to where you kind of need it to be. Um, in order for you to lower it. Um, sometimes at the campgrounds, you don't have that luxury. And so in that particular instance, you really wanna stay chopped, but then that's where you and your um, partner can kind of work together just to get it just right. Okay, so the next step is the lower coupler onto ball. So I'm going to go ahead with his little um, directions of right is to raise, left is to lower. So I'm going to start lowering, lowering. Notice how she was using her leg there just to kind of get it in position. Okay, you're good. Okay, so it doesn't say how far to lower. So I don't know if everybody's coupler is exactly the same, but I found that if I lower it all the way 
to the very bottom, sometimes I can't actually close the coupler. And so I, I leave just a little bit of room. But you can see um, how that ball is actually sitting um, underneath the thing that is gonna latch. And so Nicole is now gonna basically close the coupler. Which is the next item on our list, so. Okay, and you saw how when she closed it, it was underneath the ball and then it grabbed the ball and now it's locked into place. Our next step is secure coupler pin. Um, I have no idea what a coupler pin is. So Daryl, why don't you tell us what the coupler pin is? So this is the coupler pin. Um, you can get a lock-in coupler pin, which is um, kind of a nice thing to have. So kind of like similar to how um, we have a, a hitch lock here, you could have a, a coupler pin that actually locks as well. Um, but basically the pin is just to make sure that that coupler doesn't come loose. Okay, so there we go. All right, we're on. So the next step, we have found an error, and Daryl's going to correct this, but the next step is to lower this jack so that the wheel comes high up off the ground so that we can remove the wheel. So we're going to lower the jack so that is left. And left. And you can kind of see how the wheel is starting to loosen up. So it's going up. So I'm going to see if I've gone high enough. And now she's removing the wheel. So Daryl, do you recommend that we put this thing back in or should we keep that with the wheel? Oh, I would keep it with the wheel. Okay, so here we have our wheel, which is going to go into your A-liner. Storage. Storage. Right. Okay. Okay, so I'm still going to go up so that this entire thing goes up. Yes, yeah, so you want to raise the jack. Is that the uh, lower? Yep, yep, no, that's, that's the lower. Yep. Am I, but, yep, you're going the right way. So then it just should say lower the, the jack. Lowering the jack means, I guess, bringing up that thing. So that's a little confusing. Yeah, it is confusing. Super confusing. But the whole point of this is so that this doesn't ever hit the ground as you're driving. So. Okay. Okay. You can tell when you've stopped. All righty. Next, it says secure chains to tow vehicle crossing that. All right. So I didn't need any explanation of what a chain is. So there was that. Okay, you can tell that the chains are secured at the bottom of this thing. Um, they're welded in pretty tight. And on the other end, they have this little S thing that we're going to connect to these guys right here. And he said to cross them. So this one is from this side going over here. And this guy coming from that side going in there. Okay. And we're crossed. So that was pretty self-explanatory. Next, it says attach seven pin cable to tow vehicle. Okay, I know it goes in here. Now, where is, that's not it. That is it. That is it. This is it? Yep. Oh, so this is what the seven pin cable looks like. It's got, I guess, six things around, one in the middle. That's what they mean. Okay, so here's the thing uh, where we're plugging this guy in. Um, this guy here has a little notch up at the top. And that's to keep it from not getting um, separated from the actual connector. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and stick that in. It doesn't really make any kind of noise. 
you kind of see how this little notch here and this little thing, you have to get that actually behind that notch so that that kind of holds it in. Yep. Okay. okay. Next up. Next step is attach breakaway brake cable. All right, that's this guy here. This cable is actually attached to the to the brakes. Is that attached also to this brake controller or no? Um, that actually isn't attached to the brake controller. Um, it's actually ran directly back to the electronic brakes and it's also connected to the battery. Um, but basically when it disconnects, um, basically it tells um, the brakes basically to, to brake. <laughs> because what happens is, is if your trailer becomes disconnected, it's no longer really connected to the tow vehicle. So the brake controller can't do anything. And so it's a direct signal back to the electronic brakes saying to brake. Um, we are going to attach that to one of these along with the thing. So we're good there. Okay. The next step says remove the wheel chunks. That's pretty self-explanatory, although I don't know quite why I'm doing this in 118 degree feet. And here I'll just be walking around doing this. Out of the way. All right. And you would go ahead and put those in your storage on your Next step, ensure brake controller is connected. Looks like it's it. So basically for that step, making sure that your brake controller is connected, we're basically making sure that you have a signal uh, to the brake controller in your vehicle. And so basically what will happen is if your brake controller is connected, as you depress the brakes, you'll see a signal showing up on your brake controller. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we physically checked the brake controller, but now we're also going to check the in the... And then you can see as I push the brakes, it does stuff. Now it's really nice to have that kind of assurance. And so... A lot of times it, you know, if I don't actually have that connector plugged into the seven pin quite correctly, um, it actually will not show um, that it's connected here. And so then I can go back and check just to make sure that it's connected. And sometimes I just don't have it quite connected behind those prongs. Um, and so then I'll connect it a little bit, you know, get it actually connected and then it'll show a connection. And so, yeah, that's, it's always good to check that brake controller just to make sure that it's actually connected. Alrighty, so the last two items on here are to check the brake lights and turning signals. So uh, you really do need a partner. Well, I Not guess for the, to, for the turning signals, for the you don't turning need turning signals, you don't need a partner, but you're basically gonna just turn on your turn signals and walk in behind yep. and, and check and make sure they're working. And then have a partner for the brakes. Have a partner for the brakes. The last one is do a final walk around the trailer and check. Let's okay. go do do a final walk around. Okay, okay. so first thing we're gonna check is make sure that none of our cables are dragging on the ground. So there's nothing dragging. We're gonna look to make sure that the lock latches are secured. And if you can tell they're not secured, but you make sure that all of your latches are tight. That's not really. Um, make sure your dormers latches. There's a latch on the other side. We're going to check the wind kit. Um, make sure that these little guys are on and latched so that this can't come out. Next, we're going to check the the stabilizers. Um, that's these guys right here. Make sure they're up high. Um, we do need to walk around. Check the rear stabilizer. Yeah, checking all four stabilizers. Dormers. And you're gonna make sure that the steps are up. This lock. So Daryl is doing the latches. You got that. Yep. Yeah. So I have the latches. You're gonna check all the storage doors. Okay. Check. Get those down. Get make them. sure you get them locked. Locked up. Check the stabilizers on this side. And 
and the steps, the most important thing. Make sure the steps are out of the way. Make sure this thing's locked up. Check this stabilizer. And looks like we're ready to go. We're ready to go. And so you can see, um, this is another really good um, kind of check, is you see all of our running lights are on. Um, and so, yeah, if you've got turn signals, um, and if you've got running lights, um, then you're like very likely gonna also have brake lights. Okay, so that completes everything on the checklist and we are now ready to go. Um, hopefully this was somewhat helpful and hopefully as a result of us doing this video, we've kind of cleaned up our checklist so that someone who's really not familiar with this whole process can easily understand and follow along. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. Um, it just takes a couple, couple of tries and we'll try to get that checklist nailed down. And if you, um, yeah, if you learned something in this video, I imagine most of you are pretty familiar with, with um, pitching up. But for those of you that are brand new, I really hope this helps you. And if it did, yeah, please like this video and also consider subscribing to our channel. And I hope to see you in the next one again very soon. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago.